How many believe we serve a miracle working God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you lift your hands and praise that miracle worker? Believe. 
before offering. Um, Monday, August 15th at 6.30 p.m. is prayer for Pueblo. Men's prayer and breakfast is August 20th at 8.30 a.m. Youth prayer is this Saturday, August 20th at 6.30 p.m. Also, school is starting at CGA. So please remember to keep all church doors secured for the safety of our students and to keep from the classrooms being interrupted. Also, there um, today after service, if you're a first time guest and visitor, we have a hospitality room prepared for you out these doors to your right. There's a sign that says hospitality room. We wanna get to know you. I'm pretty sure there's gifts for you too. We wanna get to know you and welcome you to our church. So with that out of the way, why don't we stand and get ready to give our tithes and offering. God's been good to Christian Growth Center, amen? Praise God. We are on a campaign to pay off our church building before July of 2023, amen? And how many believe that God, are, God is going to help us do that? Amen? I believe we can burn that mortgage long before July of 2023. Amen. I just want to be a conduit and let the blessing of God flow through my life and into his kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Let's put our scripture up. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Let's bring it this morning in Jesus' name.
you're making your way back to your seats, why don't you put your hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He deserves our worship this morning. He deserves our praise, our total praise and adoration. As you're clapping your hands, why don't you lift up the name of Jesus. We glorify you today, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We exalt you, almighty Savior. You alone sit on the throne, God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to welcome all of our first-time guests and visitors today. I heard somebody say once that really there's only first-time visitors in the house because we're all guests because this is God's house. So just join us as we party at his house. We're th so thankful that you've come, you've chosen to worship with us. Don't forget to get your gift as you're making your way out. There's probably going to be either myself or a couple of other greeters standing out beside the door. That Above it, it says hospitality room. We want to get to know you and show our appreciation that you would come and spend some time with us this morning. Amen, Christian Girl Center. Without any further ado, I want to bring to this pulpit our bishop, our man of God. Is anybody excited? So happy he's here. I pray that him and all of the men that went to the men's camp out are refreshed and they're ready to get back to it, <laughs> get back to work. So I'm positive. I, without, without a doubt, I know that God has given him a word for every single person in this room. Amen. I'm ready. I don't know about you all. I hope we're all ready to receive whatever God has to say and not only receive it, but let it fall on fertile soil in our hearts that it would be planted, that we would go out and we would accomplish whatever God's will is. Amen. One more time. Why don't we all lift our hands and let's lift up the name of Jesus as Bishop comes to preach. Oh, come on, let's lift our voices with our hands. Let's offer up the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. I am so happy to be home. I have been gallivanting all over the country, and I was praying early this morning, and I was so grateful that God has put me in Pueblo, Colorado. Hallelujah. I love Christian Grove Center. 
in Pueblo, Colorado. You can listen. You know there's a spirit in this world today that's always telling everybody the grass is greener on the other side. But I travel. Take it from me. The grass is just as brown over there as it is here unless you water it, fertilize it, and develop it in your life. Praise God. You'll find out when you get there you'll have the same problems there you have here. Until you make up your mind, I'm going to be who God wants me to be. And then when you make up your mind, I'm going to be who God wants me to be. God will let you be fruitful right where he wants to bless you. He wants to give you a hope in the future. That's his promise. I, I saw some lady on Facebook that thought she was a theologian try to dispute that scripture. And I thought, you poor lady. Sometimes our ego gets in our way of receiving the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy to be in the house of God today? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms 122. And I want to, one announcement they're not making. Please listen. The 28th of this month, my pastor, Dr. Bishop Nathaniel Wilson, will be with us in church here in Pueblo. I want all of us, especially if you are a leader or feel the call of God in your life to be a leader, I'm asking that you be here. Uh, don't schedule something on these special, special... Did you know there were places in the Bible where God demanded for his people to show up at the house of God? And in the Old Testament, it was pretty harsh. If you didn't show up, you were cut off, the Bible says, from the congregation. Now, we're not going to go that far. But I will tell you, there are times that God wants to put a special anointing and blessing in your life. And the only way to get it is you have to come there and get it. And if you're not there, you missed out. And I really believe that this is a very special day. I have been praying. I have been fasting and praying. God, let this man of God speak to us. And uh, I believe that God is going to in a very special way. And so uh, it would be just a, a, a sign of respect and honor that we all show up that Sunday. And I believe in giving respect and honor to whom respect and honor is due. Amen? Praise God. So don't forget that. And besides that, He's one of the most anointed men of God that I've ever been around in my life. If you, if you are, have the honor and privilege of being around him in his private life, he is just as passionate and just as focused in his private life as he is in his public life about the work of God. So we're going to be blessed. And so uh, ask that we would do that. Praise God. That is August the 28th which is a Sunday which is the first day of the week which is our tithe and offering to God in our time Sunday that's why we come to church on Sunday praise God Psalms chapter 122 is where I want to direct your attention and I want to look at the time I want to be mindful of the time Bible says to redeem the time. In verse number 1 of Psalms chapter 122, David said, I was glad when they said unto us, or unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Verse number five fascinates me. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. Verse number five, for there are thrones, 
for there, excuse me, are set thrones of judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Now, if you will turn with me to the book of Psalms chapter 45. And it takes me a little while because I didn't, when God began to talk to me about this this morning, I didn't have time to put it all in note form. So I don't know where this is going to wind up this morning. I want to... uh, uh, I'm going to read verses 1 through 6 here. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever gird thy sword upon thy thigh O most mighty with thy glory and thy majesty and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies whereby the people fall under thee. Verse number six is where I want to pay special attention. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, Thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloe and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Thy throne, O God, is forever. And there's another scripture that I want to read to us. And it is found in the book of Colossians chapter 1. A very interesting scripture. I'm going to read all these verses and then I'm going to preach what God put on my heart. Hopefully I can articulate it the way he put it in my heart. For by him, Christ, that's the personal pronoun there, were all things created that are in heaven that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones plural or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist Then I'm going to go one more place in Isaiah chapter 14. Get all these scriptures out of the way and then I'll preach a little bit. Isaiah the 14th chapter. And. I want to begin at verse number 12. Notice carefully if you're a student of the Bible. This is important that you notice this. This is the only place in the Bible that Satan is called Lucifer. It happens one time. No other place. I don't call him Lucifer anymore. That name was taken from him. He is the adversary now. That's the word we know as Satan. He is our adversary. He will always be our adversary. If you're making a league with the devil, he is going to kill you. He don't make leagues. He's like a scorpion. You play around with him long enough, he will sting you. He will kill you. He is your adversary. He hates your guts. You have something that he covets, but he'll never get. And that is sonship with God. 
quite a thought. But in this case, he is called Lucifer because he is in heaven. But look at this. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. And if you go on and read, that's where God takes him down because iniquity was found in him. And, uh, uh, well, one more scripture. Who's that up there? Is that Sister Crystal up there? Sister Crystal, I think it's in Psalms 94, talks about thrones of iniquity. Y'all still with me? How many of you still with me? Uh, is it 6, 13, 94? 6, 94, 13, somewhere in there. 20. I'm, I'm get, I was getting closer at 16. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? And so I want to preach about this this morning. The Lord began to talk to me. But before I begin to preach about it, why don't you put your Bibles down? And let's lift our hands and let's ask God to open our heart to not only hear the word of the Lord, but to respond in faith and obedience to the word of the Lord. Everybody here, can you lift your hands and let's ask God, God, let your word find fertile soil in my mind today and in my heart and in the hearts of your children. Rule and reign in the hearts and the lives of your people, I pray. Oh, somebody praise him like he's your king. Can you praise him like he is your king? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you. We praise you, Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. I was laying in bed this morning early. I was awake, and me and my flesh were having a battle. The spirit was saying, get up and pray. The flesh was saying, you're tired, you need to sleep. Anybody ever fight that battle with your flesh before? Sometimes you win. Sometimes the flesh wins. But this morning, I didn't have a choice because the phone rang. And so it just kept ringing. I thought, well, if I'll lay here, it'll quit. But the guy was persistent. It was Brother Greg Godwin. And he was calling me. And, uh, and so we started talking, and he was at a conference. I can't remember the name of the conference, and I can't remember where it was. But he was saying that the man of God preached a message. And then he began to talk about thrones. Well, I have not heard the message. I'm frantically looking for it. I think I can find it. I know the preacher. I'm not saying that now because some of you will quit listening and you'll start searching Google. Some of you believe Google more than you do the Word of God. Well, you should poke your neighbor and say, you know, he's telling the truth. And, uh, you know, that's a throne that you need to let the Lord take dominion over when... Your phone means more to you in the house of God than the word of God. That's, that's, a, that's a place where you need to submit to God and let him. All of that stuff will be there after church. Right here, Jesus is the king. And uh, so I, I, I laid there and I was thinking about this. And the Lord began to talk to me. 
So I don't know. I don't know what he preached, but I know what the Lord started talking to me about. And uh, so I began to look at this in Psalms chapter 122 and verse number 6, I believe it is. Psalms 122 and verse number 6. Uh, is it 6? Where does it talk about the thrones? That's where I started, but maybe, maybe further down there. Sister where it talks about, for there are set thrones, plural, of judgment. The thrones of the house of David, this is the Hebrew word kisa, which literally means a canopied covering. And in the Old Testament, this is used in all applications of thrones. And uh, this was a place of ruling. I suspect that uh, the reason why the canopy was upon them was uh, to keep the sun off of them because can be very hot in that country. And it also was a sign of authority. It was a covering of authority. And this says that there were many thrones in Jerusalem that were set thrones of judgment. And then it says the thrones of the house of David. Now, I don't know what all this means. I don't know if this is referring that all of the thrones that were in Jerusalem were of the house of David. Be that as it may, one of those thrones was a throne of iniquity, iniquity and rebellion. And that was of Absalom. Absalom was probably the most talented man. It's a good possibility that if Absalom's heart would have been right, that he could have been the king of Israel and Judea. The Bible talks about how he was a mighty man. He had the influence of the people. Now, let's, let's hold that in, in fixed animation there. And let's talk about thrones. Because when we talk about the church... Uh, the church is God's kingdom. And there are, many, there are many analogies that God gives regarding the church. Some people get stuck in one analogy. One of the analogies of the church that the Bible gives us is found in the parables. Man, I feel like preaching this morning. And in the parables, we find... Para, para means that it comes alongside you and it assists you and helps you. Para, shoot. I don't want to jump out of an airplane without some assistance. It comes alongside you. The shoot does. I, I, saw, I saw a video the other day on Instagram and the guy's shoot was wrapped around his neck coming down. What a terrible way to para shoot. I'm glad it didn't show the end of that video because I didn't want to see the end of that video unless the parachute came along beside him and assisted him. Parables are stories that God gives that helps us to understand the kingdom of God. I love preaching in Pueblo. Sometimes you go preach and everybody's so excited that they all want to yell. They don't want to listen. And then sometimes you go preach and everybody wants to listen. They don't want to yell. But Pueblo knows when to listen and when to yell. And so the parable shows us an earthly example, analogy, allegory, all of these helps us to see a heavenly principle by using earthly examples. And so one of the, and, and all of these examples teach us how the kingdom of God is like. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a man that went into a far country. Or the kingdom of God is like a sower that sowed in the field. The kingdom of God is like. And so the parables teach us 
how that the kingdom of God is like. And one of the ways that the kingdom of God is like is like a field. And another way that the kingdom of God is like, it's like a sheep fold. And another way that the kingdom of God is like is like a far country. That's the earth. But the kingdom of God has broken in to this far country. And another way that the kingdom of God is like, it is like the bride that has prepared herself for her lover who is Jesus Christ. So within the kingdom of God is what is known as the church. Y'all still with me? The church is depicted in this sense as a bride or in the female context. But it, the bigger scope is the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, there is a ruler. Here in America, we have a difficult time with that because in America we are we well we call ourselves democratic but in the actual we are a republic I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic that's why they don't want you to that's why they don't want you to do the pledge of allegiance anymore because they want to destroy the republic they want mob rule. They say they want democratic rule. No, they want anarchy. That's what they want. So they want to destroy the republic. I'm going to preach about some of that this morning. They are against dominions of righteousness. They don't care if they're dominions, but they don't like dominions of righteousness. And so when you have a kingdom, you have a king. And a king is not ruled by the people. It's quiet in here. Now, I'm glad we live in America, but when you get to heaven, it's not going to be like America anymore. When you get to heaven, there's a king, and his name is Jesus. And he's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. And you're not going to get into heaven unless he's your king. Can't get to heaven without acknowledging that Jesus is your king. That's why it was such a big deal in the Roman Empire. Because they did understand kingdoms. And when you said Jesus was your king, you could be killed for that in the Roman Empire. But you have to understand, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my subjects would have fought for me. We are not fighting for this world and its systems, we are fighting for the souls that are entrapped in the world and the systems of this world. And that is a spiritual battle. I come to preach this morning. The Bible says, for we wrestle not. Ephesians chapter 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness, of the, uh, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're wrestling against. We're not, our battle is not with people. Sis, quit saying your husband is your enemy. The spirits that are controlling your husband is your enemy. Ma'am, quit saying, or, or, or brother, quit saying your wife is your enemy. She's not your enemy. It's the demons that control her. I got work to do this morning. Whew. I was somewhere, and I got blisters all over my arms from being somewhere. Whew. This cool air feels good. I, I got a phone call this morning, and they were telling me at one of the one of the pastors that considers me their pastor about a beautiful couple that I know that no longer live for God and they're into drinking and carousing and carrying on and fighting with one another and cheating on one another and it's just the pastor was heartbroken over this and I was heartbroken too because I've known this couple for many many years and I and 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 I was listening to him and and, and God began to talk to me and began, I began to realize that the enemy is not that woman. 
And the enemy is not that man. And the enemy is not those children. The children are suffering because mom and dad are bending their knee to the wrong throne in their life. I'm getting way ahead of myself this morning. But the enemy is the devil. He hates your guts. And I read to you how that the kingdom of God is like unto a virgin that is married off. So in the feminine sense, you see the church which has a nurturing spirit about her. In fact, the Bible tells us that the church has the ministry of reconciliation. Go read it in the book of Corinthians. That's the ministry of the church. Is to rec- That's not the pastor's job. That's not even the minister's job in the church. It's the church's ministry to reconcile. That's why I scratch my head when some of you let me teach all the Bible studies and you let me go pray for the sick. The Bible didn't say that the preachers only shall lay hands on the sick. I know it says call for the elders, but the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. You know what? I automatically know that there's there are wrong thrones of dominion in your life when you're sitting around letting the preacher take care of all of this. You don't understand the call of God in your life. You don't realize that the church is called to reconcile. I wonder what would happen if everybody in this church was teaching a Bible study. I wonder what would happen if everybody in this church would get stirred up when brother so-and-so missed church and sister so-and-so missed church. Come on, I come, I'm coming against some thrones today. Everybody in this church I know people, you know, we get it all mixed up. We try to, we try to do the work of the five-fold ministry and, the five, and we relegate the five-fold ministry to doing the work that we're supposed to do. <laughs> Man, this is good preaching. I'm preaching better than you respond, but that's all right way I'm feeling right now, I preach in a library. I don't care. That's right. We relegate. It should be us loving and nurturing, and yet we're trying to straighten the new converts out. Instead of loving them and nurturing them and encouraging them to come to church, we got it all messed. That's the five-fold ministry's job. It's our job to get them in here. It's our job to love them. I don't care if it is August. I'm not taking time off for revival just for some of you to give into your flesh and take time off from God doing what he called us to do. We're not, hey, we're in a season of revival, Christian Growth Center, and I want that season to stay that way until Jesus comes. should be us when we don't see somebody in the church that texts them and says, love you, missed you, hope everything's okay. I, I thought I thought we'd be running the aisles over that one. I really thought, man, that's a powerful revelation. I want to get that in my heart. Yeah, these are my brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. I believe that spirit is thicker than blood. You say blood's thicker than water. I'm telling you, spirit is thicker than blood. When you really get the Holy Ghost, you love like your father loves. And Jesus said by this, shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one to another.
I know there are times I got to get up and say, you know what? Might be better for you to not hang around those people. But do you know I'm only doing that at the last resort? I'm only doing that when they have built a throne of iniquity in their life. It's quiet in here. Until then, I'm hoping everybody in this church is reaching as hard as you know how. And I'll tell you something, if you're filled, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you know that. You know automatically. You automatically know when they're just fighting with their flesh. And they're not here because they just can't get victory over pornography. So condemnation is tearing them up. And so they're sitting at home instead of being, and I'm preaching to somebody right now that you're watching this online and you're not here because pornography is destroying your life and the shame that comes with it and the condemnation. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I'm here to tell you, brother or sister or whoever you are, get up off of that couch and get to church. The only way to destroy that cycle of shame is let the Holy Ghost take down that throne and take down that dominion and it's never going to happen with you sitting at home letting the enemy talk to you. The only way it's going to happen is to come in here and say, okay, king, I surrender. King of kings, I surrender to you. Take down this throne in my life. Oh, somebody clap your hands and praise him. The church has the ministry of reconciliation. You know, I feel like I need to talk to some spouses right now. That you have a spouse, the other part of you, flesh of your flesh. And bone of your bone. And when they get involved in those kind of dominions that take dominion over them, if you're not careful, that mindset will get a hold of you. And you'll get discouraged and start saying, Well, I might as well give up. Maybe I ought to preach to you about Harriet Tubman, who, when she first started out, little, little, African-American lady, five foot, maybe four foot 11, is what history says. She's one of my heroes. In fact, is that picture still up in her house? I got a picture. That picture will go with me everywhere. Somebody drew a picture of her leading people out of slavery. People that lead people out of slavery are my heroes. People that lead people back into slavery are my enemies. That's why I have no... Use for teachers that teach kids that they're born homosexuals. You're not leading people out of slavery. You're leading people back into slavery. And the gender blender letting kids take puberty blocking drugs. That's child abuse. People ought to go to prison for that. Did you hear what? I'm not backing up. I'm sick and tired of these demonic thrones having the say so. That's child abuse. That's leading people back into bondage and into slavery. Teaching people it's okay to fornicate and shack up and have sex and not be married. I know preachers that are allowing that. You're not a preacher, you're a false prophet. You ain't got a gut in your body. God didn't call you to be the Mr. Nice Guy and everybody love you. He called you to lead people out of bondage. He called you to, to preach. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4. And to set at liberty them that are in bondage. That's what a man of God does. And a woman of God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. How many of you feel the Holy Ghost rock in this house? And, and there's, I, you know, I just named one. But there are many dominions. And the church has the nurturing. But I'll tell you, the church 
under the inspiration of their king has power. And when the king is king in your life, he takes dominion. And the Bible says, I think it's in the book of Proverbs, that a king's word is final. You don't argue with a king's word. You can, you can, you can argue with certain authorities in America because they may be wrong. But if you were living under a monarchy and a king said it, there is no Supreme Court to override his word. His word is the final law. Well, I, man, I don't know about that. Well, Jesus is perfectly righteous, and he is our king. The preacher is not the king. Now, some preachers get it wrong. They think they are. They're not. They're not the king. The preachers that think they're a king, they're insane. That, that's not an insult. That is literally. When you think you're something that you're not, that's insanity. Jesus is the king. This is his word right here. And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And the Bible said in Jerusalem, there were thrones. There were the throne of David, which is a type of Jesus Christ. And under his leadership, the Bible says that the house of David would rule forever. Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 1 says, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 1, let's talk about this. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was her vexation. When at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward more grievously. We're talking about dominion here, brothers and sisters. Verse number 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Verse number three. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy and harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor as in the days of Midian. That's talking about when Gideon won the battle, brothers and sisters. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with the burning fuel with, of fire. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The Government shall be upon his shoulder. He's got a throne. He reigns. And oh my God, I feel like preaching in this place today. I was asking for confirmation. I didn't know if this is what God wanted because I didn't have time to develop this message. And I walked in here to pray this morning and I heard somebody singing, King of glory. Fill this place. Just want to be with you. Hey, brothers and sisters, you thought you were coming to get entertained by songs this morning. You thought you came to get entertained by how good the, 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 the talent was and how good the preaching. But I'm going to tell you, the king is here. The king is here. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Somebody said that church. You know, I've, I've had people walk out of this church and say, this church is going down. You know where they're at? They're down. I don't want them to be down. If you're watching this, listen. Get back up. Get back in this church. This church ain't going down. This ain't my church. This ain't your church. This is his kingdom. This is his government. And of the increase. Whoa. Of the increase. They're going to be revival here because this is God's church. There's going to be liberty here because this is God's church. 
there's going to be healing here because this is God's church. Oh, somebody praise him like he's your king this morning. Somebody praise him like he's your king this morning. Whew, I feel revival in this house. I said I feel revival in this house. And so in Psalms 94, what is it, 16, 20, where it talks about the throne of iniquity. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Now the word iniquity here means lawlessness. Lawlessness. Iniquity means chaos in the Old Testament. It was the same word for chaos. Some of you that think that you can walk without God. Just look around. People that have known God and they're trying to walk without God. Their marriage is chaos if it's even together anymore. Their kids are scattered from Dan to Beersheba. Let me tell you something. I hate that. I'm imploring if you're watching and you're one of those, come back to God. That's how he found the, that's how he found the world. In Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form. It was chaos. And it was void. It was empty. But the Spirit of God began to move. Well, you say, well, 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 the Spirit of God moves outside the church. Yeah, but you don't understand. This is where the seat of his throne is. Remember, go back to Psalms chapter 122. Where he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. My God, if I've ever preached revelation, I'm preaching revelation somehow. Somebody ought to get this. Yeah, go to move. He'll answer your prayer on your job. But I'm going to tell you where he really shows his leadership and his dominion and his power. It's in the house of God. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Brother Elder, Jerusalem. Yeah, that's the house of God. Hebrews, what is it? Hebrews chapter 12. But ye are coming to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the church of the firstborn, to the spirits of just men. That's you and I. We were so corrupt. We were so lost. We had all kinds of dominions and thrones ruling in our life till we came to church. And when we came to church and the man of God started preaching the word of God, the word of our king, the word that the Bible said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word. Hey, this word is more powerful than Google. This word is more powerful than the social media preachers. This word is more powerful than all this other stuff. And when God begins to preach that, man, when I said social media, some of you clammed up. See, that's a throne in your life. That's a dominion in your life. It's, it's taking precedent in your life. You believe somebody that you've never met in your life. They've never walked into a hospital room and prayed for your baby. They would know you if you were standing in front of them. Other than the 30-year-old picture you got posted for your picture on Instagram because you're 50 pounds lighter and 30 years younger. I'm not getting too many amens on that one. They don't know you from Adam. But God put a five-fold ministry in your life and put a church in your life, a fleshly body, sacrifices and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared a body. You know where you need to be this morning unless you're so sick you can't stand up? I'd get in my car right now and listen to this service all the way down here. But I would get in here and say, okay, okay, God. Or maybe, or maybe you belong to another body and you're mad at your preacher so you're watching me. Come on, church, I need some amens right now. 
You know what you ought to do? You ought to get off right now and go down to that little home missions church and preach that preacher till his tongue hangs out and say, you preach, preacher. You preach, preacher. Preach, preach the word of God in my life. I don't care if he's, if he's just a novice and doesn't know anything about the word of God. If you sit there long enough and if your heart is open, God used that jackass one time to talk to a man. Now, I'm not cussing. Some of you don't know what a jackass is. Let me explain to you. I'm a country boy. A jackass is a male donkey. Go read it in the Bible. Let me tell you something. I used to own a mule. She's the prettiest little thing I ever had that was an animal to ride on. Her little ears just a bobbing while I'm walking through the mountains. They just a talking to you. But she could not sing. Oh, I'd drive up in my truck and she'd run over to the fence. <laughs> It was horrible. I said, baby, baby, you look good. Just stay quiet. But that little mule never said to me, why are you beating me? Number one, I never beat her. Let me tell you something. If a donkey starts talking to me, I'm going to start listening. I said, if a donkey starts talking to me, I'm going to start listening. What are you saying? I'm saying there's an angel right there fixing to kill you. And I can see it, but you're so backslid, backslid you can't see it. And the people run around saying, that preacher's a jackass. Well, you better listen to that preacher. He sees the angel that's standing right there. He sees it. Oh, my God, I came to preach today. I came to preach to somebody. He's not trying to destroy you. Get off of this website and go back to your church and say, preach to me, preacher. Preach to me, preacher. Preach to me, preacher. Let me hear the voice of God. Somebody ought to clap your hands and praise him. Come on, Brother Richard, I'm almost finished. Musicians, come on up here. Man, I feel the anointing of God. Now, let me tell you something, Christian Ghost Center, and whoever else is watching this. I cannot make you submit to the right throne. Remember Psalms 45? Let's look at this again. Psalm, what is it, 45, 6? I get all these numbers mixed up. I would not be a good poker player. Thy throne, O oh God, is forever settled. It's the only throne. I just read to you in Isaiah chapter 9. It's the only throne that's going to stand. So, well, there's some pretty long kingdoms. Yeah, but there's no kingdom like the kingdom of God. It's forever and ever and ever. It's going to be around when they're flying around in rockets. Unless Jesus comes. And then when he comes, it's really going to be around. It's going to be all the way through the universe. The Bible says the, the heavens declare his throneship, his glory. That throne, O oh God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right. Scepter right. When he held out that scepter, that scepter means judgment. It's a right judgment. God don't mess up when he judges. He doesn't mess up at all. Go on, verse number 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore thy God, therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the end. 
the gladness, with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So what are you saying, Brother Elder? I'm saying that I can't make you submit to the right throne in your life. Your mama can't make you submit to the right throne in your life. I was talking to that pastor this morning, and he was sobbing because he loved this family. He gave, literally, him and his wife gave their life to this family. Take care of their kids. He would take this young man places with him. I could hear the heartbreak, and I looked at him, and I said, Brother so-and-so, I'm going to tell you something. It's important that people fall in love with the church. It is important. But that's not enough. Because there's people in the church that will let you down. I wish I could tell you that Christian Growth Center is full of pristine people. But it's not. Christian Growth Center is full of characters. Now none of you are, some of you are frowning at me right now. You're probably one of the biggest characters. <laughs> That's where God found all of us. Quit acting like you're something you're not. If it had not been, David said, for the Lord who was on my side. <laughs> Woo! If it had not been for my king. If it had not been because I submitted to his throne. So you know what, young lady? You can be as big and as bad and as rebellious and as moral or immoral as you want to be. You can fill your mouth full of sarcasm and unbelief, causticness, Fill your thoughts full of unbelief and let that throne reign in your life because there's Absaloms that are in the church and they're building their thrones. I'm not necessarily talking about people. I'm talking about trends and fashions and spirits that sweep through the church. Spirits of unrest will sweep through the church. Well, I, I, I just don't think I'm being fed here. I'm just not being fed. That's a throne. It's quiet in here. They're just not getting fed here. Or, there's a, there's a thousand Absaloms that want to establish their throne in Jerusalem. I, I, I've, I've experienced... Many of them, probably most of them, in 32 years of pastoring. Some of us don't realize that churches go through stages. When I first came, I didn't have you parents between me and your kids. All I had was you kids, you parents. You were kids. So it wasn't being filtered through you. And now I'm filtering it through parents and grandparents onto the grandkids I just I, you know I, now, you, now here, here's things that you hear I, well I love brother elder but I, I think he's overboard oh it's quiet in here I, I, I just think it, it, it's overboard you don't have to you don't have to be that radical that's because you don't understand how patient Satan is. And the Bible says to give no place to the devil. Don't give him an inch. And by the grace of God, Grandpa, I'm going to be as passionate to your grandchildren as I was to you when you walked in the house of God. Your life was broke, busted, and disgusted. Your marriage was messed up. And what, what brought you to the place of gladness and blessing under the scepter of the righteousness of God's leadership is the same thing that will carry your grandchildren 
to that place in the kingdom of God. And I understand that and I have that revelation. Not just for your sake, but for my sake and my grandkids' sake. Because I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are under the headship of Jesus Christ. They walk in truth. And it is an awesome thing to watch these kids run the aisles around here. And a lot of people come to this church and say, that's chaos. That's not chaos. That's liberty. You don't know where their mom and dad came from. You don't know where their grandpa and grandma came from. You have no clue where God brought them from. And by the grace of God, we're going to teach them about King Jesus just as much as we learned about King Jesus. Let's stand. And so, I've had many Absaloms pit themselves against the throne of Jesus. <clears throat> Young people that start dating. I know it's Sunday morning, but I'm, you know, I'm pastor. Start dating sinner. Young people that are not baptized in Jesus' name filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, parents, I can't make you submit to this throne. But I don't even want my kids even looking in a romantic way. Loving them, trying to reach them for Jesus Christ, yeah, but... My king says that light does not have fellowship with darkness. That's my king. That's what he said. I'm not playing with that. I'm not finding some translation on Google that gives me permission to compromise that scripture. I'm not going to find some Google theologian that's going to give me permission to mess with the word of my king. That's what he says. He said, what fellowship hath light with darkness or with the sons of God with Belial? Come out from among them, be ye separate, separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself. And then he said, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my children. There's other thrones that I can't make you move out of your life, Daddy. But remember, your little boy is watching you set that up as a throne in your life. And your little girl is watching you disobey the Word of God. And they love you. And Daddy, everything in your life seems to be right to them. They want your favor. So carefully, oh God, Jesus, be the Lord in my life. Many years ago, I preached a message in this church. Maybe I ought to bring it out of mothballs. If he can't say no, don't call him Lord. If you only walk with the king as long as... He's agreeing with you. He's not really king in your life. And remember, his kingdom's not of this world. You don't have to do it. You're doing it because you love him. And so I was listening to this man of God, and maybe he'll watch this, and maybe this will be an answer to him. But somewhere, you got to love the church. and You got to love the people in the church. And you got to love the music of the church. And you got to love the... The, the programs of the church. But that's not enough. Somewhere you got to fall in love with the truth. Somewhere you got to fall. You, you can't just fall in love with people that love the truth. You got to fall in love with the truth. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And so I'm falling in love. I'm falling in love with the word of my king. Where you go, Lord, I'm going.
whatever you say is law in my life. I don't have time to preach about the law of God, but the Bible, the Bible says that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. How many of you want his throne to be established in your life today? Do you want the throne of your king and him alone? Do you have the courage to walk into your life and your mind and your emotions and your spirit and look at thrones and say, you're coming down today? In the name of Jesus, you're coming down. I'm coming against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm coming against you. I could preach a whole hour on how these thrones and dominions come down. I, I, there's, there's biblical truths to this. I'll tell some of you the only way those thrones come down. Many years ago, I was at my mother-in-law's home, and she had a book that said everything I needed to know I learned in kindergarten. I think something like that. And in that book, that man told a story, I believe it was about the Virgin Islands, how when there was a tree that they wanted, that the men of that village would go and they would cry against that tree. 24 hours. They would scream against that tree. They would cry against it. They would scream and they would cry against it. And after a period of time, that screaming and that crying against that tree would cause that tree to die. And they would take it down because they cried against it. And I'm telling some of you, you just got to have the audacity to cry against thrones in your life. You've just got to have the audacity. You got to be like blind Bartimaeus and cry, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. Come against this throne, God. Bring it down until there's only one throne in my life. Bring it down until there's only one throne and one that sits on the throne. Oh, let's lift our hands and worship him right now. Come on, let's worship him. That king is here. He's here. If you're here today and you need the Holy Ghost, come on up here. That's where you start is by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where you start today. Come on, that's it, brother. That's it, sister. Come on up here. Come on, church, as they're coming, invite them to come with us. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. I lift my hands. I bow my knees to worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Come on, come on, that's it. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Come on, that's it. That's it. I lift my hands and bow my the thrones of addiction in your life. Come and let the power of this king bring those thrones down in your life. the Holy Ghost. I lift my hands and bow my knees to worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I Come on. Need you, Lord. That's it. One throne in my life. One throne. You, when you get to heaven, there will only be one throne. And one that sits upon that throne. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I believe you. Come on. Come on. Don't listen to that enemy and tell you you don't need the Holy Ghost. Yes, you need the Holy Ghost. Yes, you need the Holy Ghost. Oh, 
that's it. That's it. I surrender to you, Jesus. City. I lift my hands in the name of my Jesus to worship at your throne. Bring down the dominion of unbelief till there is a surrender that brings liberty and freedom, God. In the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Don't let the dominion of, of lack of care. Don't let that be a throne in your life. God, we care about these people. We're here as intercessors. Till victory takes place in their life, God. Till deliverance takes place in their life, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, we worship you, Jesus. And bow our knees to worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. you to listen to me. I feel like I need to tell this story. This happened to me before I ever took this church. I was at home with my father. He was alive. He was my pastor till he died. And he'd always been my pastor, but there were things that were in my life that were not in control to the Holy Ghost. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you need to go submit to your man of God. Now, brothers and sisters, that don't sound like much to you, but I was preaching in the biggest churches in Pentecost. I had a schedule that was almost two years out. God had opened doors for me, and yet the Lord spoke to me and said, you're not going to get victory over these things in your life till you submit to the man of God in your life a battle I can't tell you I was close by there a few weeks ago we flew over Barstow and the memories come flooding back of a motel room in Barstow California where my flesh and the devil and me had it out my flesh was telling me you don't have to do that you're a preacher but the Holy Ghost was telling me, if you want to go to the next dimension that I want to take you to, this is what you got to do. Thank God I made the right decision. Went home. It was on a Tuesday night. And the man of God in my life was correcting 
one of my heroes. And I thought he was being too strong. My cool, suave way, I thought there's a better way to lead. So I faced him in front of everybody and said, hey, that's one of the most loyal men in this church. And he said, I don't need anything from you. You sit over there and shut up. Made me mad. And all of a sudden, 50,000 demons started clamoring. Remember, remember what Satan said? I will ascend above the throne of the stars. You know who the star was in my life? It was the man of God in my life. Some of you fighting that battle right now. You can only go so far in your life. You can only go so far in your ministry and you can't figure out why. It's because you never learned this revelation that I'm talking about right now. You never got it. You get this far and then when God confronts you with leadership, you become your own man of God. But God's trying to help you today. I got in my blue deluxe 20 three-quarter ton Chevy pickup. And my wife slid in right beside me. She used to sit right by me. Maybe I need to get another deluxe 20 pickup. And I pulled out of that parking lot thinking I was right and he was wrong. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, You're not lifting your hand against that man. You're lifting your hand against my throne. And it smote my heart. And I tried every way in the world to justify what I was doing. But deep down in my heart I knew I'm wrong. That's the throne of God. Thank God in this case, and hopefully in your case, I turned that truck around right in the middle of 17th Street, drove right back in that parking lot, walked right up to him in front of everybody. Now, you've got to understand how hard it is for an elder to say, I'm sorry. Every corpuscle of pride in me was trying to justify but I want to tell you every power of the Holy Ghost was saying if you want to go where I want you to go you better get a revelation of my throne and I'm going to tell you something I said I'm sorry and I promise you I will never do this again and I, I don't know how to explain it to you but something broke authority that, that's, it's not there. The authority is only terrors to the lawless. But the authority, remember what I said about that throne there? It's a covering. It's a covering. I want the right throne covering me in my life. I don't want a throne of iniquity covering my disobedience and my rebellion. I want the throne of righteousness covering me. I want, I want the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ because I'm submitted to the right throne. Oh, can we all stand and give God the praise that he's worthy of? Come on, let's praise him. Let's honor him. Let's love him. We love you. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Don't forget this afternoon is our Spanish outreach service. I am so excited about what God is doing in our Spanish outreach. And the Spanish-speaking people in Pueblo, there is an unprecedented revival. And we support it 100%. Praise God. If you are a first-time visitor, please, we want to meet you. And in our hospitality room, we are so thrilled, so honored that you are with us. God bless you. Love one another. You are dismissed.